Macroeconomic Update March 2020 FY20 was a challenging year for Indian and global markets. The single biggest event of the year, which happened in the last quarter of the year, was the spread of coronavirus or COVID-19, which was declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization. The virus that originated in China rapidly covered all major countries, especially in the month of March 2020. Many economies implemented shutdown, partial or full, and consequently, economic activity was severely disrupted globally. This also resulted in a fall in most asset classes, including equities, commodities, and currencies. Apart from this, other major events that made headlines during the year include escalation in US-China trade tensions and subsequently agreement on phase one of trade deal, sharp rate cuts by the US Fed and European Central Bank bringing it back to all-time lows, restart of quantitative easing by the US and ECB, sharp fall in oil prices in Q4 FY20 due to severe demand destruction because of COVID-19 aggravated by breakdown of OPEC Plus Alliance, completion of Brexit, etc. On the domestic front, re-election of BJP-led NDA with strong majority, 210 basis points of rate cuts by RBI, softening of growth, default by a major housing finance company, Removal of Section 370, Citizenship Amendment Act, 21 days lockdown imposed by the government, fiscal and monetary stimulus announced to counter slowdown due to COVID-19, etc., made news. Few other key developments in FY20 were Reduction in corporate tax rates and a concessional tax rate for new manufacturing units set up before March 2023. Announcement of INR 100 trillion National Infrastructure Pipeline to boost infrastructure spending. Weak revenue collections resulting in higher physical deficit. GSEC yields declined, but the yield curve steepened during the year. Inflation hardened significantly due to higher food prices, especially vegetables. Resolution of SR Steel under Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code with Supreme Court upholding the rights of financial creditors. Introduction of Bankruptcy Resolution Mechanism for NBFCs under IBC. Crisis in a major private sector bank and consequent rescue by a group of large banks, both PSUs and private. The spread of coronavirus, which was considered more of a local issue of China till February 2020, covered nearly the whole world in March 2020. In fact, as of end March 2020, number of reported cases in US, Italy and Spain has taken over China, and Germany is not much behind. The total number of cases globally has almost multiplied 10 times in the past one month. This could also be partly due to low number of testing done in other countries till February 2020. India is relatively better placed till now with lower number of reported cases though rising. To contain the spread of COVID-19, the Indian government has imposed lockdown of 21 days throughout the nation and all activities except essential services stand suspended. A serious impact on growth in FY21, especially on sectors like discretionary consumption, aviation, hospitality, etc., is likely. Globally, most central banks have cut policy rates significantly, with US Fed cutting the target rate by 150 basis points to 25 basis points in March 2020 to its lowest level. US Fed also restarted its QE program with initial commitment of at least 700 billion US dollars. Further, it has also taken other measures like providing USD swap lines to major central banks, facilities to purchase of corporate bonds and commercial papers, etc. India also announced fiscal stimulus of approximately INR 1.7 lakh crore, mostly targeted at vulnerable sectors of the society. 
The aforesaid stimulus is likely to have only a moderate impact on FY21 fiscal deficit as substantial portion is front-loading of expenditure and burden of certain expenditure being shifted to states, in our opinion. The impact on central government fiscal deficit is likely to be approximately 0.3 to 0.4% of GDP. The government might announce additional stimulus for the specific industries and services which have suffered most due to this crisis. The RBI also unleashed a large set of monetary measures to counter the slowdown. The key measures taken by RBI are as follows. Reduction in repo rate by 75 basis points to 4.4%, reverse repo reduced by 90 basis points to 4%. Reduction in cash reserve ratio by 1% for a year. Expected to release liquidity of INR 1.37 lakh crore. Allowing additional 1% dip in SLR for the purpose of availing liquidity under marginal standing facility. Conduct of targeted long-term repo operations of aggregate amount of INR 1 lakh crore at floating rate and linked to repo rate. The amount under these operations has to be invested in commercial papers, non-convertible debentures and corporate bonds. Moratorium on debt servicing on term loans and interest on working capital facilities. The measures announced by RBI can infuse liquidity to an extent of INR 3.74 lakh crore. Further, announcement of TLTROs should help reduce credit spread which had surged due to growing risk aversion amongst lenders. Annual rate of retail inflation CPI increased in 11 MFY20 due to high food prices. The key reason for rise in food inflation was sharp rise in vegetable prices, especially onions, due to supply disruption. Further, Prices of other food items like meat, eggs, milk, pulses, etc. also firmed up during the second half. The impact of high food inflation was partially offset by lower fuel inflation due to fall in global crude prices. Core inflation also moderated due to weak economic activity and partly due to higher base. Going forward, with growth slowing down and strong agriculture production, inflation should moderate. Industrial activity slowed down during the 10 months of FY20 led by decline in manufacturing activities. Electricity and mining production growth also softened. The production of capital goods contracted and infrastructure goods slowed down significantly. Further, the consumer durables growth rate fell sharply during the period, while consumer non-durables growth also fell, albeit to a lesser extent. Due to lockdown imposed, we expect that the industrial production can contract significantly in the coming months. India's trade deficit for 9M FY20 narrowed significantly as non-oil, non-gold imports slowed significantly on back of weak domestic consumption. Oil imports also declined due to soft oil prices. Net gold imports fell sharply on back of lower volumes. Growth in invisibles remained stable over the period resulting in CAD narrowing to 1% of GDP from 2.6% during the same period last year. Further, sharp improvement in FII and FDI inflows during the aforesaid period resulted in balance of payment turning significantly positive. With Q4 being generally a stronger quarter, India's CAD and balance of payment in FY20 is likely to remain comfortable. During FY20, INR depreciated by approximately 9.3% against USD and ended the year at INR 75.63. The sharp fall in INR was triggered by massive FII selling in both debt and equity markets in the month of March 2020. In FY21, given the sharp fall in oil prices, India's trade deficit is likely to narrow significantly. 
Further, slowdown in growth is likely to weigh on India's other imports as well. Further, while the foreign outflows have been significantly high in March 2020, it should stabilize if the spread of COVID-19 is contained within a reasonable time. However, weakness in global trade is likely to adversely impact India's exports too. However, considering the lower composition of discretionary items like electronics, automobiles, luxury goods, etc. in India's export basket, fall in exports is likely to be lower than imports. Also, with sharp fall in oil prices, foreign remittances can reduce significantly. On overall basis, we believe that the outlook on India's balance of payment remains comfortable. Additionally, strong foreign exchange reserves of India should help RBI to manage any significant volatility in exchange rate. Fiscal deficit for FYTD February 2020 stood at approximately 135% of FY20 revised estimates, slightly higher than approximately 134% during the same period last year. Gross tax revenues contracted by approximately 1% on back of decline in direct tax collections by approximately 3.5% and indirect tax collections growing by approximately 2%. This was partially set off by higher dividend payout by RBI. Growth in expenditure remained healthy at 12.6% year-on-year, resulting in fiscal deficit widening to 5.1% of GDP as against revised target of 3.8% for FY20. With divestment receipt falling short of target, News report of weak direct tax collections in March 2020 and low GST collections, risk of fiscal slippage in FY20 remains high. In FY21, risk of fiscal slippage also remains high due to disruption in economic activity, slowdown in domestic growth and fiscal stimulus announced. Weak growth in FY21 could weigh on the revenue collections of both direct and indirect taxes. Further, apart from already announced measures, the government might also introduce further measures to boost growth and or step up expenditure to boost growth. However, fall in oil prices provides a room to increase duties on petrol and diesel which should cushion the fall in revenue from other sources. Additionally, lower prices should result in lower fuel subsidy outgo. Except gold, most commodity prices declined significantly driven by concern over global growth as coronavirus spread in most major countries. Most countries have imposed restriction on activities and mobility, which has resulted in significantly low demand of all major industrial commodities. Further, fall in oil prices was intensified due to breakdown of OPEC plus alliance. Major producers like Saudi Arabia and Russia have announced increase in oil production, adding to already oversupplied market despite global demand destruction due to disruption. Given the evolving situation, it is difficult to assess the exact impact of coronavirus on growth. If the spread of virus is contained within a reasonable time, impact on growth is likely to be for the short term and it should recover in the second half of FY21. Stimulative measures announced by major global central banks and governments of many countries should help counter the impact on growth to a certain extent. Further, this combination of weak near-term growth, easing liquidity and low commodity prices bode well for global rates and inflation, which may thus remain lower for extended period and may also result in lower yields in India. While immediate impact of disruption is negative for India in near term, but once the spread is contained, India stands to benefit in this environment in our opinion. Amongst the emerging markets, India is uniquely placed as most major economies have high dependence on exports and or are net oil exporters. 
Thus, weakness in global growth and fall in oil prices is likely to hurt these economies significantly. But India is a net importer of oil and stands to gain significantly due to fall in oil prices. Further, India's dependence on exports is relatively limited as compared to other EMs. Thus, once the situation stabilizes, India could see relatively stronger recovery. Further, disruption in global supply chain caused by this event has highlighted risk of over-dependence on a single country. Thus, over medium to long term, many global MNCs are likely to consider diversifying their manufacturing operations from China and India could be a likely beneficiary given the low corporate tax rate, skilled population, relatively low wages and a large domestic market. For more on this, please refer HDFC MF Yearbook 2020 published in January 2020 and available on our website www.hdfcfund.com. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.